In this video, we're going to go over doing data migrations. Data migrations are handy when you modified your models, and now you need to modify your existing data. So in this video, we're going to go over an example of when that might be useful. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at our models in our blog app, and you're going to see we have our post model, and we have title, publish date, and body. This will actually get us through most instances where we need a blog post. So in order to use this, we're going to do a make migrations for our blog, and then we're going to migrate that. And then we're going to do a migration, and there we have it set. If we'll open it up in our browser, and we go to our posts, we see we have nothing there. Let's go ahead and add a couple of posts, and we'll just do title 1, title 2, and title 3. Unfortunately, now we realize you know, we might want to reference these by the slug of our title instead of just by the ID or the title name itself. In that case, we need to add a slug field to our post object. So to do that, we're going to jump back into our models file and add the slug field. And it's simply models.slug field. We have a max length of 50 and we have blank equals true so that it's not required in the admin. We also want to add the slug to our Unicode values so that we can more easily see whether it's set or not. Finally, we're going to override the save method of our model. And on save, we're going to check, hey, is there a self.slug present? If not, we're going to go ahead and slugify self.title and set it to the slug field. And then we're going to go ahead and call the super of our save so it can finish out the rest of the process. With that in mind, we're ready to go to create another migration to add this new field. So just do a make migrations on our blog again, and we'll have our 002. And then we're going to do a migrate. If we open up in our browser, and we'll go ahead and refresh, you'll see we have title 3, 2, and 1 with hyphens. That basically means there is no slug, but now we need to make sure that we have a slug in there. But first, let's verify that we have slugs in general. So we're going to go ahead and go open up title 3, save and add another. We're going to add a title 4 in and go ahead and save. As you can see, we have title 4 as our slug at the bottom of the page. And then if we go back to our posts, we have title 3 and title 4. So title 3, when it did it save, it said, hey, I don't have a slug, so I need to generate one. Again, unfortunately, we don't have a slug for title one and two, and we could have hundreds of records potentially in our database that wouldn't have slugs at this point. So in order to do that, we need to create our data migration. The first step in that process is to create an empty migration. We do that by doing make migrations and using the empty flag, and we tell we want an empty one for the blog. So it created the, the 003 auto migration file, and now we need to go ahead and edit that. So if we'll open up the blog migration 003.py file in Vim, we can start editing it. So here we have our migration file. We simply create a class of migration and it inherits our migration. We have the dependency of a blog and the 002 migration. This says that we need to have migrations up to that specific migration done before we can actually do any processing on the rest of our migration that we're creating here. You can have multiple apps and migrations. So now that we have our empty migration, we want to go down to our operations, and this is where we tell our migration what to actually do. In this case, we're gonna do a run Python operation, and this is just going to run some Python code that is bootstrapped with the rest of our application. The run Python is going to expect a function name for a callback, and we're going to provide the name of self slug, which is going to be a function we'll write here in a second. What run Python does is it runs Python scripts. There are other operations for creating fields, deleting fields, adding indexes, removing indexes, and things of that nature. You can find more about that on Django documentation, and it's really used for doing more creating migrations by hand instead of having the system generate it for you. Since we just want to run a Python script, we're using run Python. Now let's go ahead and define the set slug function. We're going to have two parameters, apps and schema editor. I wouldn't worry about schema editor right now because we don't need to worry about it and it's for a little more advanced use case. 
However, apps is actually immediately useful and something that we need to do. What we need is we need the model that we're going to use and we can't just do from blog.models import post. Instead, we need to use the apps which will instantiate a whole set of code and we want to do apps.getModel and we want to provide the app name, in this case blog, and the name of the model that we want. This is going to go through our code base. It's going to look for the post model in our blog app at the current state based on the dependencies that we have set. And it's going to assign it to an uppercase post. And this is actually a convention, so you have a similar set of usage naming wise and calling code wise with the rest of your code base. Now that we have this called, we can just proceed like we're doing normal Django stuff. So we're going to do for post in post.objects.all. We're going to do set the post.slug to a slugified version of post.title. And then we're simply going to do a save on the post object and send it the slug field as the field that we want to go ahead and update. And that's very normal Django stuff that you're going to do. So really all we're doing is we're setting an operation to say, hey, run this Python code instead of adding a field. Then in our function, we're saying, hey, go ahead and get this model out of our apps and set it to post. And then we just write normal Django code to modify any data that we want to modify. So with that in mind, let's actually go ahead and run this migration. And you can see it runs just fine. If we'll open up everything back in our browser and refresh, you can see we now have title one and title two have slugs. And that's it. That's all there is to it to create data migrations for your existing data in your database. Definitely don't be afraid to play around with it and get used to it and use it whenever it's necessary instead of potentially writing long complex queries in raw SQL or doing some funny fixture modifications to be able to execute it at runtime just to populate and change data. With that, join us next time and have a great day.